Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to World of Warcraft. I'm sure there is something further in that we could actually do with... The, but then I reckon what we'll do is we'll end up going back to Karanos, dealing with this threat that's further in, and then I'm going to come back out and get it again. That's what I think is going to happen. Look, we're going this far into the cave? I'm absolutely certain that's what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flight to this Wendigo here. And then I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to... I was thinking. Let's, let's adventure on a little bit further. We, we may or may not have to come back. I don't have a target. Don't know at the moment. Oh no, that's, that's a dead end. So it's down in the other one. It'll be in the chamber below us. If there's going to be anything, it'll be down in that chamber down below us. There's another Wendigo over there. And then there's one down there below us here. Let's take him out. Like that. And my pet is busy doing the attacking on there. I haven't looked at his abilities here. Survival of the fittest reduces all damage you and your pet take. Instant tenacity ability. Let's move to... That is Claw Claw the enemy causing 42 damage to the basic attack. He will do these automatically. Your pet growls generating threat and taunting them. So he basically will act like a tank. Um, reduce all damage you and your pet take by 20% for 6 seconds. I kind of just got to remember that that one's there. And use that as a cooldown when things are getting a little bit tougher. Don't think I actually need to go using that one. And there is one over here. But that's a rare. That's not a, that's not a, a quest target. That's a rare over there, so we'll, we're going to go and get that one. We're going to head over this way. I'm going to take that one to go there, and, and there's another one over there that I'm going to go for. I'm going to do all the damage that I can to him. We will gather up the stuff from here. Both of our animals, uh, both, both, uh, both me and him, are healthy. And you know what? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's uh, concussive shot him. That, that will at least... Okay. Okay, that was easy. And we've reached level 14, which is also really good. Imbued infantry cloak. We'll go and have a look at cloaks and, and the other gear that we've got in a minute. We want to return to Thunderbrew Distillery. So we'll head back home a second, and then we can have a look, and we can turn in these quests. I'll run outside, and I will turn the quests in first, and then we will see about uh, comparing our gear and seeing if we've got any upgrades a minute. Good master Glinner. Well met. Did you find any of the missing supplies? Well done, Beldras. The mountaineers would be glad that, to hear that half rations are at an end. They'll need all their strength to continue the fight. Continue fighting the frost mains. There's some pantaloons right there, except we've got heirloom items with pantaloons. Safe travels. Um I think we already read that previously. Thank you for your help, Eldrast. Our forces are deployed thinly these days, and three mountaineers could be the difference between defending Karanos and being overrun. And we leveled up again. Level 15. Okay, this, this is actually pretty quick. Now that you dealt with the Wendigos, we should be able to focus our efforts on the Frost Main Trolls to the east. Most of the mountaineers and steam tanks in Dunmora are battling along the Frost Main Front, which is approaching us from the southeast. We can barely hold the trolls back, let alone advance into their village and take on their leader. Well, they've blocked our path of approach with the mysterious totems that choke the mountaineers who come in range, leaving the victims helpless against their enemies. This stone is inscribed with a rune of fire. It should be able to destroy the totems and free our mountaineers. I will see what I can do. And there is Razzle Spice, a spry sprocket. Hi, how are you? How are you? I should go back to Gnomerigan and continue researching a cure for irradiated gnomes. But I stayed behind the Karanos because the town is my home and I wanted to help defend it from the frost main attacks. I've been working on maintaining and repairing the steam tanks. For some reason, frost main scavengers have taken a liking to the gyro mechanic gear, gyro mechanic gears. I need to complete the repairs. They're all over the frost main front to the southeast of town. Will you help me get those gears back? Alrighty then. I'll see what I can do, man. I will see what I can do. But first, I want to go to here. So what do we got? 
Wendigo Pantaloons, we've got the Tarnished Leggings of Destruction. Heirloom upgrade level, zero of four. So we can go and upgrade the heirlooms. That takes us well beyond level 60. We can upgrade them all so that we get all the way up to level 90, I think. Uh, before needing to change them out. So that was the first thing I was going to ask. Is, do you want me to upgrade the heirlooms so that I've got them beyond level 60? Or not. Because I'm quite happy to do that. I could go, you know, as, as we're already using the heirlooms, I'm, I'm quite happy to go and do that. Um, so, the imbued infantry cloak right there. We don't want to do anything with that one. Disciples braces. Those are ones that we want. We'll swap those over. We've got boots right there. They are a slight increase. Only a little bit of extra armor there. So it's nothing major. Uh, pants, no. Gypsy Sash, that is our first belt that we're going to be wearing. We don't want to do that. We've got the upgraded Dwarven Hand Cannon. So our gun is going to stay as our gun until such time as we've leveled up. Now this one requires anywhere from level 1 to 90. Um, and it's Heirloom Upgrade level 1 of 4. So yeah, I'm not really sure how the whole upgrade thing works. Disciples Bracers, they can be upgraded again. We've got the big Trog Bracers right there. Uh, Anvil Mar Musket and a Plundered Rock Jaw Chest Guard. None of those are actually any good to us. So we will leave those behind. And the rest of this worthless piece of white glass. I don't even know where I got that from. I got it from somewhere. Right. Oh, wait, we have unspent talent points right here. So we can have Beast Mastery, Marksmanship, or Survival. I've been told that Survival is actually a lot of fun to play. Um, survival is... Wait, Kill Command. Uh, Ranger favors using explosives, animal venom coordinated attacks with their bonded beast. Marksmanship is the one that, where you don't have your pet. Survival, you use your pet, but you do close combat. And Beast Mastery is the one where you do ranged combat with a pet. Now, I personally, I would like to go for Beast Mastery. Uh, some people have said that um, this one is not quite so fun to play as Survival. Survival being the more fun. But the last character I did was a close combat character so for that reason I would like to go for a ranged character this time and survival is very much a close combat um, build for the hunter so that's why I'd like to stick with this one so now in here we've got killer instinct kill command deals 50% increased damage against enemies below 35% health Animal Companion, your cool pet additionally summons the first pet from your stable. This pet will obey your kill command, but cannot use pet family abilities. So basically, we've got an additional pet that will come along and start doing... Yeah, we, we can r r run around with two pets. That's the bit. Dire Beast summons a powerful wild beast that attacks the target and roars, increasing your haste by 5% for 8 seconds. That one has a 20 second cooldown. So it's an ability that we can constantly use, or we've got the passive animal companion. I want the animal companion. I would like to have that one. So over here, I can choose with my pet, I can have Ferocity. Driven by a frenzy persistence to pursue prey, these beasts stop at nothing to achieve victory. Even death is temporary for these predators. Uh, you and your pet gain 10% leech. Primal Rage, that's up at level 65. Cunning over here. Guileful, guileful creatures capable of skillfully mitigating lethal blows dealt to themselves and their allies. Pathfinding, you and your pet gain 8% increased movement speed. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. And then you've got the Tenacity, Stalwart and Veteran Defenders who unquestionably place their thick hides and protective experience in harm's way for their allies. Endurance training, you and your pet gain 5% increased maximum health. That's pretty good. And survival of the fittest reduce all damage you and your pet take by 20% for 6 seconds, which is that ability right there. That has 3 minute cooldown. So Cunning... Gives you pathfinding, which is 8% increased movement speed. So occasionally, it actually be pretty cool to change over to that. But what I want to do now is I want to go and capture a new pet. So I've got pet utility here, and I've got summon pet right there. 
We got Beast Lore. Gathers information about target beast displaying, displaying diet, ability, specialization, whether or not the creature is tameable, and if it is exotic. Feed Pet restores 50% of its total health, not usable in combat. It used to be that you had to feed pets all the time to keep them happy, and they had a happiness rating, but they got rid of that bit. Um, and then you got Mend Pet. Tame Beast. You must dismiss your current pet before you can tame another one. Tames Beast to be a companion. That's what I'd like to do. I'd, I'd like to be able to have a tame... You must dismiss any active pet, any beast companions you have, and have an empty call pet slot before you can begin taming a new beast. Only beast mastery specialization hunters can tame exotic pets. So that one call bear, I've... Uh, the, I, that's, that's the slot that we've got. I've, I've literally just got one slot right there. So what I'd need to do is I've got to... If I want to get another pet, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're getting another pet. So I've got to go and find... I've got Tradesman Profession Trainer. Seriously? My, you're a tall one. Leather working and skinning. I could have be seen you. trained with him instead of having to go up to Iron Forge. I prefer the idea of having to do it at Iron Forge, though. Um, I, Hello. I don't know why, I just do. Right, I'd like to stable my pet here. There. Empty stable slot. There, level 13. There. Oh! Oh, that's active pets. Oh, so I do... I've, I've got two available. Ah, right. Keep your feet on the ground. Okay, so it looks like I can actually do that without having to worry about calling up another pet. So, uh, am I able to have a boar as my pet? Like, like... I know that most people go for wolves. Wolves are apparently really good. But I don't like doing things the way that everybody else does. So Beast Lord gathers information about the target beast. What does that tell me? Beast Lore. Lore revealed. Um, specialization Cunning. Tamed abilities. Bristle, Bite, Dash, Growl. Diet is basically absolutely everything. So that's, that is a cunning creature right there. It's specialization. Can I tame it? So that's level 16. How do, how do we go about taming a beast? Tame beast. I just got a channel tame beast onto it, haven't I? How many times do I have to do it? That's all I got to do. All right, I've now got a boar over here. So I've got bear, Beldras pet, and I've got boar, Beldras pet. And over this side, I've got Growl, and then move two. So his ability at the moment is literally just Growl. Mend Pet is over there, and then Call Boar summons your second pet to you. Call Bear summons your first pet to you. You must dismiss your current pet. Right. Set focus, dismiss. So I dismiss the pet. I dismiss the boar. He's gone. And then I go here and I call my bear. And then I've got him following along as well. So I've got the bear, dash, increase your pet's movement speed by 80% for 10 seconds. It just does that. And then that survival of the fittest is one that we can just go and use. So let's now do a quick test and see what happens. I'm only going to use a concussive shot because that doesn't do very much damage. Um, and I will just do that a minute. Yeah, they're, they're, they've both gone into it. I got my bear is doing the tanking and then I've got the boar who's going along and he's doing additional damage in behind. So I could get rid of that one and I can get another one because there are other pets that we can get. I could go and capture a wolf. Now, wolves are apparently a lot better than pigs. They do more damage. I, I don't know what pigs are like on the grand scale of things. I can't, But I, I kind of like the idea of doing things a bit different. Yes, I know he's slightly less damage and we will eventually change him out to something different. But right now, I like the idea of having a battle boar. A bat... A, it just, it sounds cool. A battle boar. Having a battle boar join us and, and like, aid in the battle, I, I just think is, is very awesome. 
I, I, I just really like the idea. Okay, I want to burn down these totems here. Like this. And I also need to find these bits. Uh, gyro mechanic gear. Crossmain scout. Where are the gears? Ah, uh, scavengers are actually holding them. I see. Right. So I've, I've got to get the scavengers. So I'll go over there. And I'll get that one as well. And if I do that, both of my pets come out and do damage. Right, there's my gyro mechanic gears. And here I can burn down the construction totem. And then I got another totem, a uh, constriction totem, I should say, not construction. And there's that one right there. And then I got one more. So now all I got to do is just go and get the frost main trolls. Bring the fight. Right, we can both have those. And I can have that one as well. There's another gear. I've got, I've got three gears so far. Right. Let's take these. We will put a shot in every time that they every time they hit one. We will put a shot in as well, so that we, we can, like, and, and we'll help this person out a little bit. So there's three more gears. I need two more after this. And, and take that one there. Got any more? Summon some more. There's a gear. Oh, I want that one there. Frostbane, Frostbane Builder, is, is that? Yeah, the, the, the builders don't actually have any. I can't have builders. You, you can't be doing this. We, we've got to have, we, we've got to have those. There. I need these. And then that one over there. You, you summon that one? Yeah, you've got that one. And we'll pull that one down. And I am done. Right. That is all of the gears that I need. I'm done with that. We're going to... Um, hearth all the way back over. I've already used up all of my rested XP as well. So we're leveling that fast. We're already up to level 15. This, this is, like, insane how quick it does happen. Yo! Yo! Let me browse your goods. So I want to get rid of some of this gear. The green stuff I will keep. Um, the other stuff, we, well, if, only if it's bind on equip. Bind on equip. These other ones we can get rid of for a minute. Because we're not actually going to use them. They're no good to us. So we will drop those up there. And then the rest of this stuff... Excuse me. The rest of this stuff we want to hold on to for a minute. Safe travels. I haven't done very much skinning yet. We need we need to like do the we need to do fighting against things that we can skin. That's that's what I'd like. I'd like to be able to fight some animals so that we can do some skinning. And this is going to be one problem with leveling up super fast is that we're not going to be able to do like it's going to be difficult to keep up with our skinning skills. Can I help you? Those pilots can't wait to get back into their steam tanks and take to the field again. Let's not let them down. Those gyro mechanic gears are perfect. These two tank pilots are well on their way to being back in the fight. You have a great day now. I will, dude. I will. Captain Tharon. Finally, some good news from the Frost main front. I'll have the Mountaineers press their attack immediately. Now we must signal our gnomish allies at Steel Grill to start their advance. We can have a staff or we can have a gun. Uh, the staff is worth slightly more, so we'll take that one. And we're leveled up again. Ooh, I got more abilities. Okay, multi-shot. Fires several missiles. Hitting current target and all enemies within eight yards. Okay, that's pretty good. So I want to move you over there. Disengage. We'll put you up here now. Mend pet. We'll have to go over there. Heals your pet. Oh, that's able to be done in combat as well. Disengage there. Stone form removes all poison. Eagle Eye, unlimited range, changes your viewpoint. Right, that's not a combat ability, so we'll move that one up over there. Non-combat abilities can start coming up over here. And then I've got the multi-shot, and the concussive shot is the slow one for pulling people in from a distance. With your help, we've managed to push towards a frost main retreat. Our forces will soon be in a position to dwindle down the frost main trolls reserves, leaving the village open to attack. That's where the Nomrigan Covert, Covert Ops team comes in. Their technicians have figured out a way to deploy operatives behind enemy lines without alerting the Frostmains to our presence. 
head to Steel Grill's depot just northeast of town and speak with Delbert Crank Toggle. He'll tell you more about it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go here. Summon my chauffeur. Uh, right, he's, he's, he's not actually saying anything that needs to be read out, I don't think. And we will continue on this way. So we need to go on. We'll, we'll, we'll go via the road. Um, we need to go to Steel Grill's depot up over here. So we got a wolf right here. Just wondering if we should try taking on the wolf. Like, uh, try taming a wolf. That's, that's all I was wondering. Wondering if we should tame a wolf. Uh, you, Beast Lore. Let's, let's have a look at that one. Beast Lore over here. Ferocity, it's Furious Bite Dash Growl. Diet meat. Vicious creatures, these wolves. Right. They are, um... Not putting up much of a fight with, with the, the, um... Abilities that we've got right here. With our pets. Uh, two pets going on this, going on the fight right here. They, they don't really stand much of a chance. Nothing really stands much of a chance against us at the moment. But being level 16 immediately, like at this point, that this zone only goes up to level 20. That's the problem. We've got all the way over here to go and do it yet, but this zone only hits level 20. So if you look in here, Eastern Kingdoms... Oh, wait, no, Dunmoro is level 1 to 60. Oh. Oh, that's good. It does actually go up to level 60. I thought for a minute it wouldn't. I thought that it would. St it stopped at level 20. Um, so I was a little bit concerned that we would out-level the area before we finish doing the storylines. But it doesn't look like we're going to. Greetings. Greetings. Ah, you must be the dwarf that Captain Thara said he'd be sending. I've already used the Deployatron to get most of the Covert Ops teams into position at Frost Main Retreat. They're just waiting on your arrival. Cataclysm has brought our enemies closer to home, so the Chief of Gnomeric and Covert Operations asked me to build a device to dispatch personnel quickly and quietly to any corner of Dunmora. Behold the ultra-safe personal personnel launcher. With a jolt of electricity and the benefit of VLD of a VLD parachute system, uh, that's very late deployment for you laymen, this baby will get you aboard get you to the front in no time. Just hop aboard and prepare for flight. Slamp Wob Wobblecog will be waiting for you in the drop zone. Kind of a bit concerned just by the name Slamp Wobblecog. Just, just Very that. Well, then. Just the name doesn't exactly inspire me with confidence. So I will be honest with you here. So what have I got to do? Uh, ultra personnel. Lo hmm. We've got some technicians here. I'm. I'm a little bit concerned about this. How safe is this thing? <laughs> Here we go. Right now, now where are we going? We 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 don't steer this. It just throws us. Uh, are we gonna have a parachute? Ooh, that was late deploy. Not too bad, though. Actually, I'm reasonably impressed. You know, considering the the what. Um, is this from troll attacks or is this from personnel being dropped in? Thinking that could go either way, to be honest. Okay, that is brilliant. Greetings. Don't worry, the feeling of being zapped won't stay with you for more than a few minutes. All in all, it's not a bad way to get where you're going. That parachute system needs some work, though. Very late deployment indeed. Sometimes too late. Anyway, we have a mission to carry out. Yeah, I, I think that the Gnome Riggan Covert Ops over there, I think that it was the parachutes that failed them. When we're done here, those Frost Mains will fear us more than the Trogs. They'll have no choice but to leave. The Frost Main Chieftain died in the initial Trog onslaught, but they've been led by a well-respected warrior ever since. Batok the Berserker was the one who organized the Frost Main Retreat, the construction of the new village, and the strikes against Karanos and the Mountaineers. If we remove Batok, the Frostmane's organization should crumble, leaving the Mountaineers free to pick off the survivors. Batok will be in the village just east of here. Yeah, I'll get right on that. I, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a lowly hunter. I've just you know, spent my life just 
hunting animals. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I'm cut out for this kind of attack. This, this is some serious stuff. This is very serious stuff you're asking me to do. Delva's technicians have been up day and night helping us prepare for this strike. Aside from building and tuning the personnel launcher, his men have prepared the covert operations air wing for a strike on Frost Main Retreat. They'll be waiting for a signal to begin their strikes. Take this flare with you and set it off near the cluster of buildings at the northern end of the village. And the buildings at the southern end of the village. The flying machines will make a quick strike at each site. Right. Did you see him drop in? I feel kind of sorry for these gnomes being forced to do this. I really, I'm, I, I'm genuinely feeling sorry for these gnomes. We got Holy Nova and Right Knight the Seeker over there. Salutations! Salutations! We need to halt the construction on this Frost Main village. If we let them get too entrenched, it'll be more difficult to keep them from settling here permanently. It's time to give those brutes a gnome's eye view of the world. Take this gnomish viewpoint equalizer and use it on one of the Frost Main builders to bring them down to our level. They won't be able to lift their tools and construct. And construction will come to a standstill. Be seeing you. Okay, we've got to use a viewpoint equalizer. Shrink a Frostbane builder down to gnomish size. Showing everyone else what it's like to be a gnome for more than 50 years. <laughs> okay, I like the sound of this thing. So we'll take a mosey on up this way. Where's this village? that they're, oh, they're, they're building the village over there. Right, so we've got a Frostbane warrior over here. I need to get some of these. Where's my... I need to summon my pet. Right. Call boar. Ooh, I know what I need to do. I need to bring that one out. There. And then I, I can choose which one I want to summon then. So I can have whichever one and then the other will be the secondary pet. So we'll have the bear out. And he's going to be doing the defensive work. And then we'll take a mosey on over this way. We've got Batok the Berserker over there. Let's get him going. And then we've got a, a big hit. And ooh, oh, Okay, wow. Um, the, the, he's got some anger management issues. I need a tar that's, that's some major anger management, that is. And then i got another warrior over there. I want to bring him into the fold as well. Um, right. I was trying to use that one, but I didn't get to use it in time when both the um, thingies were still up unfortunately. And there is a builder, so I've got to use this one on him. Frost main builder, yeah. Coming a little bit closer, and then shrink him down. Why everyone else get so big? Uh, mostly just because. You know, why not? Alright, let's, let's stay away from there so we don't have the big bad boss spawn again. We've got to put a mark out somewhere over here. So we need to get some frost main warriors. There's one there. Oh, you're not supposed to, like, the, the builder there, you're not supposed to be attacking him. Let's, let's equalize him before we attack. And... Oh, I was, I was going to try and do the attack everybody. It's, it's this one, the multi-shot. I haven't been able to use multi-shot yet. I've been trying to. Oh, that's a scavenger. I don't want scavengers. Warriors that I'm after. Right, bring you over here. Go over with him. And then let me use multi-shot. <laughs> that was a bit underwhelming, really. That was definitely what we would class as underwhelming. Right, well, anyway, I've, I've taken down a couple more. I need some more builders. They're not that way. We need to go this way to get the builders. Right into the... We need to be in the village to do this. Take you. Attack on Northern Frost Main Retreat. Attack on Southern. Right, well, where are you? Ah, it's here. This is where i got to be. i, I got to come over here like this. Uh, you there. Well, unfortunately, folks, the bear is getting a wee bit tired. And, well, I suppose we could admit that we're getting a little bit tired as well. So we're going to have a little bit of rest and recuperation. Enjoy some meat and mead. And while we do that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.